Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Peter. Hey guys. And uh, one common thing is people love FPV, right? Yes, they do. Quite a bit, actually. Quite a bit. It's so controversial nowadays. It's controversial, but it's fun. And you can do a lot of really great things with it. But you know, a lot of platforms simply can't carry the weight of an mm -hmm. FPV platform, can it? Yeah. And also, heavy equipment means lots of mass movement when you mm -hmm. hit something. Lots it of destroys damage. things, and it's not very good if you're learning FPV too. Yeah, you want to put something on on a, a light plane, keep it light, keep the characteristics nice, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a problem. But you got a solution for that, and it's something you guys can order, and we're mm -hmm. going to show you how to build. Yep. So you, you, it opens up your options some, so you don't have to stick with like Horizon or anyone like that. You can. Pick your own yeah. parts and basically build your own system. And Horizon does have some new micro FPV systems yeah, that are wait, what I can wait to get my hands on. Yeah, about a hundred bucks. Uh, yeah, hundred bucks. And so, the best mm -hmm. part is, is it works with Immersion, and Immersion is a mm -hmm. really good company. Mm -hmm. Immersion RC yeah. has the Fat Shark goggles that and they that's work what with. Most everyone operates off the, yeah. that band of 5.8 gigahertz. 5.8. Mm -hmm. So always be careful when you order these components, and we're mm -hmm. going to have links for you. If you want the DIY experience, you want a small micro. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah. They're puny. It's tiny. We yeah. actually are putting these on our new micros that we release, and it doesn't even act like they're on there. They're so, not as small as Horizons are as refined, but yeah. they're a tad cheaper and you have a little bit more wider range to parts to choose from. We were range checking this. Mm -hmm. We took one of our new micros and we actually flew past our tower about 2,000 feet away. No mm -hmm. signal breaks, even with a linear polarized antenna, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Except when you started banking, that's when the signal went completely yes. gone. When you bank, you're in trouble, but for little things like these mini quads, racing around maybe a gymnasium mm -hmm. or in a backyard. Or even just your house with like nanos and stuff like that. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Peter, what items do we need to order to make this? Well, first I ordered the transmitter. It's a 5.8 transmitter. This is the 200 milliwatt one from Range Video. They sell a 3.3 volt and a 5 volt option. I accidentally ordered the 5 volt one. You can tell by this silver pad here. But it still works great, or at least momentarily, off the yeah. one cell light post. So when you order it, make sure you order the 3.3 volt version. So if it's a 5 volt, you got to tap into a receiver that produces 5 volts, like yeah, a bigger yeah, receiver. Yeah, like, right? like a BEC or something. So you could basically plug this into your BEC channel on one of your receivers and power that way. Very nice. But we've been flying off one cell LiPo and it works great. Great. So you're going to need to order that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do you need to order? That else comes with the antenna there. Okay. So we're going to order the camera. This one I found from FPV Hobby. It's a 1 gram NTSC mm -hmm. camera. This is also operating on 3.3 to 5 volts maximum. And that's around, we're running you about 50 bucks or so. Okay. And that's going to give okay. you a very narrow field of view. So you're fixing that with the lens, right? Yep. I also bought the lens, the wide angle lens here. That's uh, around 10 bucks or so. You just got to make sure when you buy your camera, make sure the um, the lens will fit. Because they sell very, very, very different style one gram cameras with very different lens capabilities. And also yeah. bought a dip switch. I don't have a place for where this came from. Radio Shack doesn't really carry that many dip switches, so you're gonna have to hunt online to find something like this. Amazon, something yeah. like that? I bought this, this actually came in a grab bag. Really? So I really have no part number for this at all. <laughs> we'll see if we can mm -hmm. find something for you. Yeah, because you can see this is a four pole one. And this is a three-pole dip switch. You really need a three-pole dip switch when you buy this. So just be aware of that. Very cool. And that's one benefit that uh, mm -hmm. those little tiny radios don't always give you. Sometimes just locked mm -hmm. into one channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this this you have you can select up to eight channels. Okay. And you robbed this off of one of our busted micros, didn't yep. you? Yeah. So, uh, I need one of these plugs for the little mm -hmm. batteries. But you can buy this from Horizon. I need to look at the part number for, though, for this. Okay, cool. We'll have so we'll it in the links. And this is just a little lens cover that comes with your lens. Yep. And We're ready to assemble. All the components. Okay, what things do you need to build it? Uh, you're going to need a really fine tip soldering iron. This is like an SMD type tool for soldering on and off. Just some standard 6040 rosin core solder. You can even do it with a blunter one too, but that takes more skill. But since I have the small one, I'm going to do it with the small one. And one thing you don't want to do is don't take a blunt nose solder tip mm -hmm. and file it down. You yeah, lose all the you, ability yeah. to carry solder. Once you take off the, uh, the layer, uh, it'll start to oxidize like mad and then basically just corrode it off and go away. So what's the first step in assembly? First, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and solder the antenna on. The antenna basically has the the conductor, I guess, for transmitting the 5.8, and then it has the ground, which is basically the shield on there. So basically, if you look on the back of the receiver, it'll say ground, antenna, and ground. So we're gonna go ahead and just follow the directions on there and basically solder it just like that. So what I like to do first before beginning soldering anything is I'm gonna go ahead and wet all these pads, just tin them all, just to make soldering a lot easier. Right, once that's all wet, I'm going to tin this area too. And what about the center conductor? Is there a little piece on there? Yep, there's a tiny bit of scrap that's already cut off. Okay. Want to help me solder this? As Peter said, you can actually just go out and buy. The Horizon has a brand new system out. Immersion has some pretty small stuff. Yeah. It's kind of nice because you get to build your own. Yep. Yeah, this just basically shows you the components and it. It makes you not so locked into one specific brand. So just feel free to experiment and look around. Just be careful before you order anything. Make sure everything's compatible by just yeah. reading it. Because I, I made a mistake here. I grabbed the 5-volt one versus the 3 again. Yeah. Such a dumb mistake. You can 
easily fix if you just slow down when you order something. Well, this is one thing I want to go back mm -hmm. to. I know we say it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's BevRC, there's Immersion, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different companies. The one that Flight Test supports and really endorses if you're getting into FPV, mm -hmm. go with Immersion. Uh, mm -hmm. Immersion's fully forward and backward compatible, mm -hmm. so you know if you get stuff that works with Immersion technology, you're going to have a good yeah. experience. Yeah, and when you buy these transmitters, be aware that there are very different uh, bands of 5.8. This is uh, operating on the Immersion band of 5.8. There's like band A and F or something like that. Yeah, we're like I, half, yeah. half frequencies. Yeah, half the frequencies, 5. yeah. Uh, DJ and Oz is the same mm -hmm. way. So whatever you find, commit to that and make sure that it's always compatible. Don't just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because it's 5.8 doesn't mean it's going to work with your stuff. Okay, so what are you doing here? All right, right now I'm going to bend these pins over on the dip switch. Okay. Because I'm going to go ahead and just hard solder it on there. I mean, you really can avoid this step just by reading the manual. You can get your different frequencies by grounding the little endpoints on the uh, transmitter. You can basically ground it through this pad right here, or you can ground it to the top of the receiver right there. So that's what we're gonna do next. The reason we're putting the dip switches in mm -hmm. is say we wanna fly together, we yep. can all assign different switches. Yep, so now we can just change channels at our will. Now I'm gonna solder it. All right, so we're gonna go and tin this, same way. This is the benefit of having rosin core solder. You don't yep. have to use 60, the rosin. 6040 rosin, yeah. 6040 rosin. And now we're gonna clean the antenna off. It works best if you have like a scotch Bright pad, but for laziness sake, I guess, I'm just gonna rub <laughs> it on my shirt. Since both surfaces are tinned, all you can do is touch the iron tin and it'll just stick. Very cool. Now I'm gonna come back and hit him once it's kind of held down. So the way dip switches works mm -hmm. is, is it, it's the way, how it grounds out, right? Yeah, it'll different just ground, combination. yeah. It'll ground the different combinations to the body of this thing. Okay. And now we're gonna saw the other side. So we'll just do that. So effectively you have a switchable jumper. Yep. And the reason Peter was wiping that off and stuff is you don't want any oil in between your connections. Yeah. You have a solder puddle like that, but it won't be mm -hmm. connected. It'll make a big mess and you end up overheating the transmitter and breaking stuff. So now it's onto the camera side. So I've already cut off the long wire just about, what would you say this is, one and a half inches or so? Yeah. One or two inches. You can basically make it longer, shorter yeah. if, if you want. The idea of what you're doing mm -hmm. is you're gonna kind of make this modular, right? Yep. So you could leave it separate and then you could have this strategically located. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, we're gonna have this all carried with one unit. Yep, I'm just gonna stick it all together that we just move around from plane to plane. So same thing here, we're just gonna tin this again. And now you're gonna follow the instructions on the pad again. So we'll get that there. You can see the ground, a65, which is, I believe is audio, but well, we don't have audio, so we're not gonna worry about that. And there's your video. So your video is the white wire, your power is the red wire, obviously, and the ground is black. Now with this camera, does it have a voltage threshold where it can go from three volts to five yeah. volts then? Yeah, it can operate from three to five volts. Okay. Now last thing, uh, we're gonna go ahead and solder on the uh, battery plug. You can basically choose any kind of battery plug you want. We're just gonna go with the one cell uh, style plug from Horizon. So I'm gonna tin these as well. And now we're gonna go and solder that ground to the one last open ground pad on there. So basically at this point, we're pretty much done. Before we go ahead and mount the components to any sort of board or anything, we're gonna go test it out. So we're gonna grab our 5A system and fire it up. Go ahead and double check everything once over, make sure nothing's bridged or, or grounded to the wrong spot. Is there anything you should do with the dip switches? Uh, you can leave them alone right now. Okay. You can figure out once you get everything going, Okay, I guess. it doesn't hurt anything yeah. if you jump or more than one? It'll just be on the wrong channel, that's okay. all. Okay, cool. So look that over, once you're good, we're gonna go and plug it in. Now this has the narrow field of view, right? So it's probably gonna be out of focus and... Ah, uh, yes. So right now we're getting nothing, as you can see. So now I'm going to start triggering jumpers just randomly until I find the channel I want. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. There we Too go. Bad. Yeah. So now you can see how it's out of focus. So you're just going to go ahead and unscrew the camera lens a little bit. Well, this is something you want to be very careful working in a clean environment because if you do swap yeah. out lenses and you get dust inside there, it's going to be very difficult to get on. You don't want to use a Q-tip or anything. And you want to focus not to your thumb, but you want to focus... Yeah, to stuff in the, in the uh, yeah. background. And probably get the, the furthest away, get as clear as possible, yeah. right? Because you're going to be working, mm -hmm. what do they call it, in infinity mode? Don't focus on something very close to you. Focus on like the trees outside and try to get mm -hmm. the best image from there. Probably at least five feet away. Mm -hmm. And once you're done with this step, you're going to want to take a little drop of hot glue or CA, your choice. CA is like a lot harder to remove if you do it. Yeah, and, and be put careful, little, it, can, little, it can hose yeah. your uh, lenses. Yeah. So you want to dab a little bit there to keep this from unscrewing because this is very easy to turn and unscrew. So it'll come out of focus and worse, fall off in flight. So go ahead and focus the camera to your preference or whatever you want to do and then take the glue on it and then smooth it down. Also have it powered up the entire time just because when you put the glue down, you could inadvertently unfocus it or focus it to, to a distance you don't want. All right, so one, the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue the camera down. 
just to where I like it. You can glue this onto like a, a car, piece of cardstock or something or a popsicle stick. But I'm just gonna go and glue the camera to the transmitter. Try not to get too much glue on the transmitter because the, the transmitter does get pretty warm. It's <laughs> 200 milliwatts after all. It has to soak up all this power somehow. So I'm just gonna glue it to the very edge of this. It's kind of maybe always do an inspection before you uh, fly, right? Yep. So the importance of gluing it on or having the, the camera powered on before gluing on is to make sure you glue the camera in the right orientation, not upside down. Because these cameras look all the same on all four faces. There's no up air or anything. So just turn it on, see, uh, establish which way is up, and then glue it down. Last thing I'm gonna do is just bend the antenna up, just because I like it uh, up so it's polarized that way. And that is a remarkable little yeah. antenna. Um, and that's pretty much it. And the cool thing about mm -hmm. this, these things have tons of functions here. You can put this on a mini quad, you can put this on a mini airplane, and have a lot of fun in your backyard exploring the surroundings. Or whatever you come up with. Friends, want to thank you for watching. Peter, great job on that uh, that build. I actually thank the internet, because that's where I found all this stuff. Well, there you go. That's one powerful truth, too, mm -hmm. is uh, there's a lot of great stuff on the mm -hmm. internet. We take a lot of our inspiration from things that other people have done. So always go and mm -hmm. check it out. You know, Research what you want, search for it. It's what we do. Also, there's a huge community on flighttest.com in our article section that has done lots of great mm -hmm. hacks like this. Yeah, it's um, really a new idea though. It's mostly just shown in a more broad light. Yeah. Like a lot of these ideas have been, our, been around for quite a, quite some time now. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, with FPV and stuff getting into it, you know, a cheap little solution, something you can throw on there, have a little bit of fun with. It's nice. It's gratifying that you yeah. can build it yourself. Yeah, this is my favorite way to learn FPV because it's it's small. Yeah. That means it doesn't wreck into the wall at 100 miles an hour and then break. It yeah. wrecks into the wall at like five miles an hour. <laughs> and I love the fact that we were able to use our uh, mm -hmm. immersion technology to actually mm -hmm. pick up on that signal. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So just make sure it's compatible with immersion or whichever frequency you decide to use. Cause that's, yep. that's a big thing. Uh, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. Yep. Friends, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for part of the community. Let us know what else you'd like to see. All right, man, All right. let's put it on the plane. Let's go fly something. <laughs>